March 1st, 2018 North Andover School Committee meeting being broadcast from the Thompson Mellon Elementary School. We're going to start that with a Pledge of Allegiance. So we could all rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, that's a good idea. Actually, if we could stand, stay standing, we um, would like to have a um, recognition, a moment of silence for two people um, this evening. Um, the first is a um, special, special education teacher from the Sargent School who passed away this week. And um, can I say a couple of words about Julie DeMarco? Absolutely. Um, Julie DeMarco was a beloved special education teacher at Sargent. She was an integral part of our community, and particularly the community at Sargent. She loved working with children. She did some outstanding work with those students, progressing them in their reading and their writing and their mathematics. She's going to be dearly missed by all of us. And we also have um, Timothy Pibus, who is a um, longtime school committee member and um, president of the North Endeavor Booster Club. And a couple of words to be said about him as well, please. Mr. Gilligan? Yeah. Mr. Pibus was uh, selfless. He served on the school committee from 2004 to 2008. And I cannot tell you how many countless hours of volunteering as the head of the Booster Club, but all the years as a coach and someone who supported athletics and academics here in town. And uh, he's going to be greatly missed. He was one of the good ones. Moment of silence for them, please. Thank you. We are going to start the meeting tonight with a um, report, a student report from Lima Carroll. Hey guys, how's it going? Hello. Hello. Um, a couple things to talk about. Thank you, of course, for the mic. Um. Uh. So. Uh, this weekend, we have uh, the Drama Guild is hosting their annual Drama Fest, which is sort of a theater competition that they have within the school. Uh, so it's going to be really fun at the high school in the auditorium. Um, we have nine teams advancing to regionals for robotics at the high school, uh, wow. which is the most we've ever had. We're, we are the school with the greatest percentage of making up regionals, so it's really awesome. Um, March 16th, we have Mr. North Andover coming up, which is our big male pageant. Um, should be a lot of fun. Uh, and March 17th is Relay for Life, which is our uh, annual event for uh, through the American Cancer Society for raising money for cancer uh, patient cancer treatments uh, for patients and helping with treatments and research for cancer. Uh, so that's Saturday into Sunday the 17th. Um, this week, Student Council sent out um, collected letters and sent letters to um, or is going to be, are going to be sending letters to the students at Parkland. Um, as they return to school after uh, a tragedy. So that's really good. They're, there's a big effort going on right now for supporting them and things across the country. Um, there are still some sports going on. Uh, hockey had a game the other day. Uh, girls basketball had a game last night. Uh, but mostly winter's wrapping up. Spring sports are starting in three weeks. Um, so yeah, and finals coming up very soon. Uh, um, I was asked to talk about um, class rank and sort of a student perspective on removing class rank as an idea. Um, I've talked to a few people. I don't think that most people, I don't, I don't want to say that most people don't because I think some people do share my sentiment. In general, I don't like, I don't think the idea of class rank is very beneficial. I think that competition in learning is a good thing. It encourages motivation. It provides more motivation for learning. But in general, I think that it tends to the competition with class rank tends to overtake the actual learning. I think that um, the will to want to be one, one of those top ten or at the top prevents people from, sometimes they'll take classes where they'll get a higher GPA but they won't necessarily learn as much as if they were to take a higher level course that was more difficult. I think that it um, takes the focus away from education and more the focus from I want to be the best so I can get into the best college. college and. The, I think that a lot of times what happens is that very best person or those people at the top don't necessarily make the colleges that they want because they focus so much on getting their numbers up that they're not focused on the extracurriculars as well. So I think that um, 
I think that it adds a, I think that it adds a spirit of competition, but sometimes I think it goes too far. I think that a lot of people think it's a good thing, that they believe that it, it benefits and they want to know who's the best. Um, but I don't know that any of everyone, I don't know that anyone agrees that it's the best metric for who is the smartest in the class. I don't think that it takes that into consideration. I think it takes into consideration who does the best with the material taught, but there's so much more to be learned and so many more skills to be learned outside of the classroom that are, just aren't measured. So that's my Thank opinion you. on that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Liam. Liam. Thanks very much. Um, just a reminder that this um, meeting is being recorded and broadcast tonight, and if anybody has cell phones on, they should turn them off. And um, we're going to, if everybody is all right with that, we're going to hold on public comment until we first hear from our young um, students this, uh, this evening and what they've been learning in Eureka Math. I'm going to start with Ms. Larkin. Uh, so with us tonight is our STEM coordinator, pre-K through 12, Carol Lacombe, and our mathematics coach, K-6, to Val Drynan. Thanks for having us tonight, and more importantly to our amazing kindergarten and second grade students, um, along with Ms. Padivani and Ms. Chimana, who are here to really give you the, the full demonstration um, of a little taste, I should say, of your math. But we want to just remind you, um, first of all, oh, hopefully this is gonna, oh, there we go, um, why we chose Eureka this year. So um, a lot of the math shifts from the 2011 math standards involved um, increasing the rigor of math, and our old resources weren't providing enough of that. So some of the pieces that you'll see tonight will really show you kind of how, it, how Eureka addresses the fluency, um, and builds a real conceptual understanding for students as they move from grade to grade. And the math practices are really embedded within it. So some of the things that you might wanna look out for as our students demonstrate is how they're modeling with math and using lots of different ways um, to model um, and be able to explain, right? Give those arguments, why is their answer their answer? Um, and focus on that a little bit. So just a little reminder of some of the information from last year why we chose Eureka. So there are four different components in a Eureka lesson with the fluency, application, concept development, which includes a problem set, and student debrief, which includes an exit ticket. Um, we wanted to just share that with you so you kind of have an idea of what you're seeing tonight because Ms. Chamana and her wonderful students are going to demonstrate a couple different components of it, and then Ms. Padovani and her students are going to demonstrate another. Um, and just be on the lookout for how the math moves from the concrete where they're hands-on to the pictorial where they're drawing images and seeing the math and to the abstract where it's the numbers and the symbols that um, represent the math that they're doing. So we're going to turn it over now to Ms. Shimana and her wonderful kindergarten students. So I'm Allison Shimana. I'm a kindergarten teacher here at Thompson School. I've been teaching here for 11 years, and I have five students from my class. I have Allison and Zoe and Aiden and Ryan and Dominic, and they're going to do a fluency activity, and we're also going to be showing one of the concept development activities that we've been using. Um, one of the really great parts of Eureka for kindergarten is that we're doing a great job of developing our number sense and we do a lot of hands-on activities um, especially with counting right now we're working on more than and less than so we're gonna show you one of our fluency activities okay take your 10 stick okay before we start I want you to each just double check and make sure that there's 10 cubes there If you have 10, hold it up. Okay, we're gonna start with the less than, so go ahead. Okay, let's put it back together.
So this is part of one of the concept development um, activities, and we've been using our mathematical language to practice sentences about more than and less than. So they're going to take turns rolling the dice, they're going to show that many cubes, and they're going to practice using their more than and less than sentence. All right, are you guys ready? Then two. Two is less than three. And we're going to wrap our lesson up here. Um, in the classroom, we would continue on and do uh, the problem set that would go with this. Um, so this, this is just a little glimpse into what we're doing every day in kindergarten. Hello everyone, my name is Justina Padovani. I teach second grade here at the Thompson School. Um, in second grade, one of the foundational skills is subtraction and addition with composing and decomposing, a 10. So that is what we've been working on the last month in second grade. And the Eureka Math program front loads um, a ton of different strategies for students to be able to, to explore. And then once they feel confident, they're able to pick a strategy that they feel comfortable with or that meets their ability and skill set. So right now, I have five students from my class that are going to share with you five different ways to solve a subtraction word problem. Did you want them, to, are we still doing that? Okay, so there's a copy on, in your packets, or, and the idea was to see how you guys would do it first, and then they would show you how they solve the problem based on the Eureka Math learning that they've been doing. So the problem is, that, no calculators, <laughs> the total length of a red string and a purple string is 73 centimeters. The red string is 18 centimeters long. How long is the purple string? And the first student that's going to share with us is Connor Elderkin. Come on up. I saw I saw this problem using vertical subtraction. Seventy three minus eighteen. Um, you can't take away eight from three, so you go to the tens place, and you have to decompose 
So you cross the 7 out, make it a 6, then put that 10 to the 3, make it a 13, then 8 minus 13 equals 5, and then 6 tens minus 1 ten equals f 5 tens. So your answer is? 55 Very centimeters. Nice. You can go Avery is going to share another way to do that with vertical subtraction as well. My strategy to do this is using vertical subtraction and a chip model. And I look at the problem, and I can't take 8 from 3, so I decompose one of the 10s from the 7, and it turns into 6. And the 10 goes into the 1's place, so that equals 13. And I did 13 minus 8 equals 5, and 6 minus 1 equals 5, so the answer is 55 centimeters. So you can see her um, strategy has more of a pictorial um, that is attached with the vertical subtraction. So that's the scaffolding that's embedded throughout the program. The next student is Elise Guazaloka. I solved this problem using a number bond. First, I drew the number bond. Then I draw. Then I drew the hole, which is 73. Then I drew. The, part, the only part that I know, which is 18. Then I drew the number sentences. I drew 17, 73 minus 18 equals 55, and 18 plus 55 equals 73, and it's kind of like a fact family. Very good job, honey. And then we have Dane Favada. For this problem, I used a tape diagram. A tape diagram has one hole in two parts, and the hole is 73. The first part is 18, and the other part we don't know. So I come over to my vertical form, and I subtract 18 from 73, and then I will end up with 55. Very nice. And then our last student is Jack Wrigley. I use the plus plus one strategy. Instead of adding one, I added two to both numbers. Now it has, it is 75 and 20. 20 is easier to subtract than 18. So, on to the subtracting. So, when I take away 20 from 75, it equals 55. Thank you, everyone. Great job. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. That was amazing. <laughs> hit the next. Nope, did it go? Yeah. So um, one other insight. If you don't have a mathematical genius at home like these amazing students, um, we did provide a built a family website for some support. So if you need to see some of those strategies, um, it's under the academics tab on the NAPS um, homepage. And there's a math resources page that has a lot of those models and some additional information. So if anybody out there needs some, some info, there's more available. So thank you. Does anyone have any questions for our, any of our guests or guest teachers, or directors? Can Would it be helpful to talk about how we, for the public, how we got to this point of doing Eureka and, that, sure. and why we adopted Eureka? I mean, I know we've discussed it in the past, but maybe for those watching at home. Sure. Um, a few years back, we were using a Houghton Mifflin product, and it wasn't meeting our needs when the standard shift in 2011. And um, so we started researching. Um, what is the most rigorous and what is the most standards aligned program out there and um, we came down to two programs one called go math and one called Eureka and we had several pilots across grade levels and elementary schools and we took feedback um, not only from teachers but we had the ability to go to different communities that used it to see what the pitfalls were what went well uh, we were lucky because a few communities locally have gone to Eureka one being North Reading one being Groton Dunstable uh, Methuen, uh, a whole bunch of different places. And the success that they were having matched up with the science, with the research behind and the rationale why we wanted to have the most rigorous, up-to-date uh, curriculum resource for mathematics. And uh, it was unanimously um, by principals and teachers and the math committee. And Ms. Larkham, I really have to credit her with 
leading this charge. She had a math committee doing a lot of work mapping all the standards, and then we went back and said, okay, what is going to be the best resource K to six? Ms. Larkham, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? That was perfect. Um, I'd say that as we unroll it, there's been some bumps in the road. Just anything new is always a challenge, but teachers have really worked um, extremely hard. You can kind of see there's so many components to each lesson that it takes some time to study those and really um, apply them in the classroom. So teachers have been absolutely amazing, and it's fantastic. So thank you to your support for a new position of a math coach, because Val has been um, completely invaluable um, across the district. And then our time in the morning collaboration has been wonderful. So we meet with each team on a rotating basis, and that's been great to provide some additional support. So things, I think, are going smooth and lots of smiling faces. I think, again, there's, there's <laughs> struggles here and there as we work through, but um, it's really been very positive. And for the parents at home, um, when they talk about collaboration, we have a period every morning that we built in with the teachers last time in the teacher contract. And um, between the Lucy Calkins writing and the reading coaches and Miss Marks and the STEM director and Val, they see every grade level at elementary once every five weeks uh, to collaborate with them and, and progress monitor and see how things are going. So. Can I put the two teachers on the spot? Can you, um, <laughs> Even if I can't, I'm going sure. to. So. <laughs> um, I just love your, you know, you're a, a newer teacher to our district. You're a more veteran teacher in our district. Just to talk about what it's been like to teach and to watch the kids with this program. Um, I can confidently say that as challenging as this program has been as an undertaking, it's a lot of prep. Um, it's, it's a lot to read through. I am thoroughly enjoying uh, my math teaching experience this year and I can't say that that has been the case for my entire career um, my class has really done a wonderful job with it and I feel like they're in a great place maybe even further along than any class I've had just with um, and a lot of the the skills that we're practicing on a daily basis so and <laughs> um, the past district that I taught in used um, everyday math, which kind of has a similar layout where they scaffold the lessons and there's a spiral throughout the program. So going from that to Eureka, I thought was a nice um, combination because I was able to use my experiences in that program and see how I remember in the beginning, we first the first module we did, everyone was like, "Oh no, this they don't they don't get it they don't get it." But as it spirals like unit module three now all the kids are using the strategies that we learned in module one because it's a scaffolding program so I knew that that was gonna happen because of the everyday math was this very similar but I think the students have done such a fabulous job grasping these strategies I think it's so important for all different learners and differentiation how they are able to pick what they what strategy that fits for them and they're very aware of I need a picture or I don't need a picture and I think that's really good for them to be aware of their own learning and also for them to have the resources that they need to succeed so it's been really great so far and the kids seem to be really enjoying it okay. yeah. thank you very much thank you Yeah, if we can take a break for a second, we want to let our, I'm, unless Thank the kids want to stay for our meeting. Thank, you. Awesome Thank you. Thank you for coming out tonight, boys and girls. Yeah. Let's we'll take a, like a four minute break here, five minute break to. I know, we all did it all in. See, and I never do that. I never do that.
I know, but you're trying to get further. Order, and thank you for your patience. Um, we have a uh, public comment. If anybody would like to make any public comment, come on up to the mic. I'm going to read from this because I'm a preschool teacher. So this whole adult thing is not my forte. I'm going to do my best. <laughs> if you could just introduce yourself too, that would be great. I'm Allison Garrett. Um, did I say where I live? Sure. <laughs> uh, 12 Coventry Road, Windham, New Hampshire. Um, I'm here to represent the staff of the Early Childhood Center. A majority of the staff at the ECC would like to keep the name the North Andover Early Childhood Center. I'm speaking with, um, in speaking with different staff members who live in and outside of town, um, I feel that I'm better able to understand their thinking at this point. I want to preface by saying I don't live in North Andover. However, I've been employed by the North Andover Public School, specifically the preschool, for 20 years. 
um, I was hired to teach in one of the four classrooms at the old high school. Years later, as our program grew, we traveled from one school to another until we finally have been able to call one place our home, which is the North Andover Early Childhood Center. Um, now this is the home of nine preschool classrooms, so it's been quite a journey. Um, I understand the importance of choosing a name that has a story, and I'm very passionate about that as well. Um, as a member of the subcommittee to name the building, I was very careful to keep my ideas and my feelings while disengaging myself from multiple conversations about the topic. Um, since all of the suggestions have become public, I've engaged in more conversations and listened to my colleagues' justifications as to why we should remain the North Andover Early Childhood Center. And both the preschool and the kindergarten have evolved and grown. And we're a vital part of the public school system now, thanks to everyone, including us. In our journey to become one school for the youngest students in North Andover, our history and our roots are the stepping stones that have brought us to where we are today. That's our story. Whether it was having one in an old classroom um, in the very old high school, whether it was in Bradstreet or in the elementary schools, today the ECC is embracing the opportunity to become one with the kindergarten. The preschool and the kindergarten have a long history of stories to tell. We're thrilled to lay the foundation for the youngest children of North Andover. And I stand behind my colleagues' strong desire to keep the name the North Andover Early Childhood Center. And I'd appreciate your consideration to keep the name the North Andover Early Childhood Center. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comment? Mr. Limpert. Stan Limpert, 43 Stone Cleave Road, the president of the North Andover Historical Society. I just want to reiterate um, our support for the name and Bradstreet for the uh, kindergarten and, pre and preschool um, for our community. As you all know, Ann Bradstreet was a very, uh, one of our most famous citizens here in North Andover. And in our mind, exemplifies what we're trying to represent here in our, in our school system literature, education, um, the uh, opportunity for everybody to be able to uh, take part in what's going on here in, in the, our community. She was a, a very uh, unusual person in that she really went out of her way to do things that were not being done by women at the time. So she's a good example of an early uh, opportunity for people to see an example of what people can actually do when they really try. So I just wanted to mention that again as you're making this consideration, I think it would be, it'd be great for us to be able to continue the name Bradstreet, which has been a school in our community since 1885, and most recently, before the school was uh, torn down, was our last integrated kindergarten building, as you all know. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to keep uh, that name alive and uh, use it for an opportunity to try to foster not only her name, but the love of literature in our community. Thanks. Any other public comment? Thank you. Um, next, we're going to move to our consent agenda, which uh, we do have a set of minutes from our last meeting way back at the beginning of February, February 8th. I haven't had a chance to look at those, but I'm open to a motion to approve or amend those. Motion by Ms. Vitsky Lynch. Second. Second by Ms. Picard. Um, I think I'm going to do a roll call because we weren't all here at the last meeting. So, Ms. Picard. Aye. Ms. Lynch. Aye. Mr. Trissy. Mr. McDevitt. Abstain. Abstain and I. So that's a 4 0 1 vote. Thank you. Um, and so, the Chair's report um, a few things. Um, and I'm might overlap with you, Dr. Price, so I apologize, but that's fine. Um, very excited about the um, announcement between our, since our last meeting of the new uh, middle school uh, principal, uh, George Consolves, who's coming from Winchester. And um, I really appreciate, again, the, all the work that the committee did and all the um, community members who came out and met our three finalists at the various coffees and all the time that they spent um, 
at those events. So thank you, and I'm very, I went to those as a parent and enjoyed meeting all the candidates, but I was very, very excited about the um, selection. So um, I think that's very exciting. Um, we've had various people um, reach out. I've had you know, people through email and a lot of personal discussions and through PTO, presidents and other things mention that there's a lot, as you can imagine, of people talking about um, school safety, concerns, how do we do things, what have you, are we gonna discuss it? And I'm sure Dr. Price is gonna mention this as well, but we will be um, putting that on our agenda in April to, uh, as we do on a regular basis, discuss the various ways that we um, maintain safety in our schools, practice for various situations, et cetera, and um, that we will go over again in April. Oh, we didn't wanna do that with our young friends here tonight, um, and we're gonna be at the Sergeant School in two weeks, but um, that we are hearing that people are asking questions and we're happy to um, review what we do uh, on a general basis and as everybody already knows, we work extensively with police, fire, um, at all the buildings, all the staff, students um, on various scenarios and um, are always looking at ways to keep our schools safe. A um, little plug for the League of Women Voters are doing a, a candidates forum on uh, next Wednesday, March 7th at 7 p.m. at Stevens Estate for the candidates for um, Board of Selectmen School Committee. We have two incumbents here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and also um, town moderator and housing authority. So I encourage people to participate in that either by watching it on North Andover Cam or by attending at the Stevens Estate. Um, in case people don't know, and I know Dr. Price has announced this, and it's on our website and whatnot, but the Pristash Award nominations for volunteers um, in North Andover are due tomorrow. <laughs> so um, any last minute um, nominations should come through, and all that information is on the website um, for North Andover Public Schools and in Dr. Price's announcement that she um, sent out her nightly news um, that went out today. And um, I, we all enjoyed participating in various, um, we are continuing to participate in various uh, Read Across America activities this week. A lot of fun, a lot of great things going on at our schools and thank you for including us and I also thank the Board of Selectmen who I know I saw some of them at um, the Franklin School on Wednesday morning. I know some were at uh, Kittredge as well, as well as Diana DeZoglio and um, so a lot of involvement there and thank you to all the teachers and staff and students for including us in this very fun week. And that's what I have. I was going to start with Read Across America Week. You said most of it. Uh, Diana so. DeZaglio, Representative DeZaglio, did not read. She sang. There was a flash <laughs> mob. Um, it was quite impressive to see the state wrap up their singing. And uh, very fun, uh, exciting. I tweeted out some pictures of that. So um, I do want to let you guys know that George Gonzalez, our uh, incoming NAMS principal, will be at the next school committee meeting. So everybody That's can great. meet him. So um, he is that. Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Gilligan, and I should be announcing. Go ahead, Mr. Gilligan. Uh, Assistant Superintendent, we had a very strong pool. We interviewed 13 to start. We narrowed it to five. We interviewed five this week. And we should have finalists announced sometime early next week. And we'll probably have an announcement mid-March yeah. um, of a finalist that we'll bring forward to meet the school committee. And that round of um, <coughs> the next round will be in mid-March uh, yes. for a few weeks. And uh, g good news um, on the central office front, Mr. Gilligan's uh, defense date was confirmed today. So he will be defending his dissertation. Um, and he even went so far as to go to university cap and gown today and get his doctoral robes. So it's pretty <laughs> exciting. Feeling confident. Uh, he got a good deal on him. So, you know, <laughs> so it's, so, it's very exciting for us at central office. We're all pulling for him. So on the 14th, if you call central office and none of them are us are here it's because we're BC rooting for them so um, in terms of um, school safety um, just quickly I did a, the NCAM piece on it I would encourage you I did my um, superintendent's update all about school safety um, I also wrote a piece in the nightly news um, which came out today in general I, I just want to say you know of course our hearts are with um, the educators the students and the families in Florida I mean there's just no other way to put it um, it's, it's just such a tragedy for uh, our nation, frankly. Um, beyond that, I, I do want to re reiterate that last year we took a, a relatively bold step um, and really changed our entire protocol to deal with a situation like this. The reality of the situation is no matter what protocol you put in place, there's always the concerns. And we put in place the research, the best research, the best thought of program with Alice. We trained the entire staff last year. They've now been working on it for a year and a half, giving our educators 
choice in these situations. And uh, although, you know, it's hard to talk about, I feel like North Andover is ahead of the curve having done this pre-K to 12. Um, and it's been in, in concert with the police and fire department. And we continue to practice, as the educators in the room will tell you, we do these drills all the time. Um, so that in case there is a situation, at least we are doing what all the law enforcement folks in, this, in the country say is the best response. Um, more importantly, um, and I use that language, um, is you also have to remember that North Andover is leading Massachusetts in terms of social emotional learning. We have a director of social emotional learning. Most towns are envious of that. Most communities are envious of that. We are working very, very hard to make sure that we are encouraging and making sure that our kids are connected to our schools and connected with one another and connected to our educators. Um, and I feel very strongly that the focus on social emotional learning and understanding that's key, that focusing on that is as important as focusing on the development of math skills is something that North Andover has very much adopted and is actually leading the conversation on. For anyone at home, I would encourage you to go into our website and look at our social emotional learning website. It really is top notch in terms of what we're doing. So. Um, to that end, we will be having both um, school safety presentation and our social emotional learning presentation on April 26th. I thought it was very important to put those two together because I think it's very important to talk about both. Um, you know, just building a protective place for kids is very important, but equally important is making sure that our kids feel safe and connected within our schools. And so that's what I talked about. Um, and we will go into much more depth on the 26th of April. Again, um, we are in a situation with um, our next school committee meeting being uh, at Sargent. We felt this 26 made the most sense. Lastly, in my report, I wanted to show you guys you had adopted the calendar. Um, and we put in the um, early release days. So if you look, you will see a few things I just want to note. Um, one of the things we've committed to do, if we can, if it happens to fall, is to um, recognize Yom Kippur, um, which is one of the highest, uh, holiest of days for um, our, in the Jewish religion. Um, and that is actually on the 18th slash 19th of September. So you will see that we have only one early release in September, and that is on the date of Yom Kippur. So um, I, that was, so September, we also felt like, and we've done this now for a few years, just getting back into the role of September, I think is very important. Then you will see we basically go every other week. We've looked at a whole bunch of um, different parts of this. We've gone over this calendar more times we've moved them um, we feel like this is the best in terms of can be on a consistent we think wednesday consistent parents know families can can um, you know know that it's coming kids stop is able to adapt um, but uh, this is how we have uh, proposed our um, early releases okay just to let you know all right just a quick question with the jewish holiday um, and it would be the 19th because if begins at sundown. Is it begins at program? sundown on the 18th. Um, so most families would be in Temple on the 19th. So okay. it would just be a shorter day that the students would be missing. Okay. Um, also, we have really committed, and when I met with the families a few years ago, is if a Wednesday was, because we do Wednesdays, if we could do anything on a Wednesday, we would do it on a Wednesday. Okay. Um, you know, of course, for, for some kids, they will not be coming to school that day if they are in Temple for the day. That being said, um, they would have a shorter day they'd be missing. They'd be missing, right. And that's the same thing for staff if they... Yep, same right. thing for staff. So we, we, we're sorry. trying now, we, we, Rosh Hashanah is on a Saturday, I think onto a Sunday this year. So, um, you know, again, our commitment was if a Wednesday fell, we would do our best on Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur to um, have it be an early release. With regards to the um, assistant superintendent candidates, they'll be having a day in district, the sure. finalists? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, day with his Parents, there's an opportunity to meet central office, an opportunity to meet staff, an opportunity to do walkthroughs uh, uh, with Dr. Price and myself, and an opportunity to complete a performance task. So. Terrific. Standard Thanks. operating procedure now in this yeah, district, I love right? That. I just love to hear you say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wonderful. So Great. that's my report. Thanks. Any questions? All right, um, so we can move on. Do we have a school building committee update, yeah, Mr. Tracy? Oh, very Dr. Price. Uh, yeah, just go ahead, Mr. Tracy. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> you had asked me. I was going to recognize you in a second. All right. Uh, sorry, I apologize. Uh, things are still moving ahead very, uh, very nice pace, I would say. I know people don't see anything going on up there, but hopefully, uh, if the weather holds out in three weeks, 
will be uh, you'll, see, you'll see some trucks up there you'll see some movement um, the first phase is obviously the site work um, and uh, obviously the the modules are being built out in uh, in Western Pennsylvania so they are being built um, it's happening it's still on target um, we had a pre-construction meeting on uh, Tuesday which I was not able to attend but I know our our fearless leader was able to attend and I'm sure she'll give us a quick update on that part yeah and uh, Mary Lou Mary Lou and Judy, and were, there Judy were there too. Um, just very quickly, uh, March 23rd, which is a Friday, they're going to be mobilizing and fences are going to be up. So that will be the first kind of tangible. Um, starting uh, during April break, we're going to be reconfiguring the entry to the ECC so that the fences actually can go larger. Um, obviously, there's some significant concerns about traffic patterns between the middle school, uh, the Early Childhood Center, and um, Atkinson. We're working very hard with um, a number of folks to get maps out to people and to, sh to understand there's going to be two phases of traffic patterns, one when the fences are smaller, one when the fences are larger and the entrance has been reconfigured. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the immediate. Um, it's going to go quickly, is all I can say. So, Mar you know, March 23rd, it's, it feels so not real now. And once we get the fences up and the signs up, it's going to start to really feel real. <laughs> I, think it, I think it might be helpful, though. Uh, I know I've gotten some feedback from some Atkinson school parents. I'll just say that. Um, to, to maybe at, at their April Atkinson yep. um, PTO meeting to uh, brief them on the progress. I know it's going to be a little confusing for a, a couple months and there'll be a, a couple changes in traffic patterns. Um, and there are also some concerns, obviously, about the short-term uh, playground situation up there. Yeah, yeah. I've, been a, I've been asked by some Atkinson parents, yeah. same thing, like what is the playground space? What's the outdoor? Are they gonna be squeezed down small? Are they gonna be crossing streets? What's gonna happen? Well, you know, um, uh, Madam Chair, that the middle school fields project is going to have a big impact on what's going up there. So this is not a standalone project for that site by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's my understanding that, um, you know, hopefully at this town meeting, May town meeting, there'll be um, a request to move that project along with more, more CPA funding. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's going to be a lot of activity up there for the next, the next few years, not only with this project, but in the next few years. And I think the, the more information we can get to that, that, that P PTO, um, the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. So I think we're just about finalized on the, the site, the, site um, the traffic plan for that. So. Um, I think April might be a good time to go visit the Atkinson yep, uh, School absolutely. PTO. That's a very good idea because th that's where a lot of the questions are coming from for sure. Yep. And obviously at the Early Childhood Center right now too. So. They're getting daily updates over there though. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've got a bunch of people maybe on the team. Maybe so even hourly. <laughs> <laughs> but the kids are excited for the trucks to come. Though. I bet, right? <laughs> and the cranes. That'll be the most yes. fun. Yeah. The cranes. <laughs> Big diggers, yeah. Um, great. Any other questions on that? All right, um, our old business is um, again back to the um, vote of support or discussion about um, the elimination of the high school class rank. Um, I appreciate uh, Liam making some comments during his uh, remarks this, this um, beginning of the meeting. Um, yeah, as you guys know, we've asked you to vote to support the administration's recommendation to uh, for to move forward with the elimination of class rank at North Andover High School beginning with a class of 2019. Madam Chair, I just want to echo what you just said about Liam. Um, I've been here for three and a half years now. And <clears throat> those are probably some of the most thoughtful um, comments I've heard and from that, you know, real student perspective on something like this. It's a, it's a, it's a big change and it's nice to hear. I mean, last time obviously we heard from Principal Jackson and, and Mr. Nugent I think uh, hearing from Liam about it, and <laughs> if that's any representation of, of how the kids are feeling, I feel you know pretty comfortable moving ahead in this direction. Well, um, I would like to just credit Mr. McDevitt as works with um, <coughs> Caitlin and Liam and did reach out to them and say, can you you know get some some research and talk to some of your your classmates, and um, I appreciate that you had them do that, and I think that was helpful. Um, I don't know if you have any other comments or no, heard any no, other I'm, things. Uh, I mean, the comments that he said were very much uh, in line with <coughs> what he emailed, and uh, I know a number of high school students, and uh, they've really echoed his comments as well. Yeah, so I, I, same, I same for me. Schooler, but, yes. Um, I do actually have a high schooler who was at first very upset because she's like, I really want to know. I'm working really hard. I really want to know where I am. I'm like, it doesn't matter. But I really want to know. Can I just find out? I'm like, 
it's not in your best interest. So that was the only person I've heard say anything was my kid. So how are you going to vote? I, don't, I told her I don't think it's 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 for a lot of the reasons Liam said. I think I think again, and I said it last week, a lot two weeks ago, when when um, Mr. Nugent brought it up. One of the most compelling reasons is the fact that that measure is is causing students to choose classes that's not in their that they're really what they want because they're chasing a number that really is not all that valuable in the wrong run, long run for most of the students. So, so at our last meeting, folks talked about communication. I just want to I yes. forwarded you all an email that Mr. Jackson said to, sent to all of the families. I wrote about it today in the nightly, in the nightly news. Um, and we also, I'd like to thank Hillary, our website designer, did a phenomenal job creating a whole web page devoted to this. So I do feel mm -hmm. like we have communicated as broadly as we can through all of our, our networks, plus obviously school committees. So, I, so I, I do not anticipate that this will be a surprise to many. Um, it may be a surprise to some. I've been in this business long enough to know that it'll be a surprise to some. But I do feel we have tried every way we can to communicate to people that you guys were considering this. Yeah, and we had a very well attended meeting we with Mr. Jackson um, before it was brought up to school committee. We probably had about 20 parents in the room. Um, and really, I don't remember anybody in the room thinking that it was a bad idea. There were a lot of questions or conversations about um, GPA. Um, but there wasn't anybody in the room that was saying that this, this seems the most important thing. And also very compelling, I have a student who's currently in the college process now, who's a senior at North Andover High. Um, students being cut out of scholarships from colleges because their class rank um, is cutting them out of that. Whereas if they don't have a class rank, then that's just not one of the things that's taken into consideration. So it's, it has consequences for kids. Um, those kids especially that aren't the top, you know, one, two, three. Totally agree. So I move that we support um, the modifications as written in our document. I'll second that. Motion by Ms. Picard, second by Mr. McDevitt. Um, I just wanted to look at that one specific spot uh, and ask one question if I can, and I, if I can find it in the packet. Where is it? Oh, what? Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, so the highlighted part in yellow under class rank. So what you're proposing is to take away Just get rid of all of that. But what about the fact that determination of valedictorian and salutatorian will be made at the end of the second trimester, senior years? Because you're we're keeping that. We will keep that. So would we keep that phrase in here yes. just under GPA? Yes. I, that's what I would yep. would like so us to specify. So the official, um, yeah. Well, the official when we approve um, the the program of studies, yes. we will actually approve the that's language. Separately? Okay. So you're not approving a language change. You're just supporting the recommendation. Great. Thank you. Then when we come back with the program of studies, we just felt it was very important to do it now, um, yes. as we are starting the college process with our juniors right and I would say maybe as one last communication is specifically like handing a letter to the junior class yeah because um, they're the first ones who are going to experience this but you will get another opportunity to vote on the exact Perfect. language Thank you. when we okay. bring back the program of studies Great. so um, the motion I'm sorry the do we do we vote on the program of studies or only on the handbook so you um, we have brought forward the program of studies in the past and we will make sure we do it this year thank you so we have a motion by Ms. Picard, a second by Mr. McDevitt. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. I think this is very exciting. Thank you. I think it's great for North Andover. I think it is too. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I think she'll be fine. <laughs> I don't think she needs to know any of that. So. Um, <laughs> Okay, and now um, we're on to new business. So we're going to start with the. Um, are we going to start with the fit money presentation? Sure. Okay. Robin is here, and um, it, we aren't going to be that long, so that's great. Yep, they are here. You can link link on them. Great. Great. So hello, everybody. I'm Robin Kahn. I'm the executive director of Fit Money. And Fit Money is a financial literacy program that we brought to North Andover a year ago, a year and a half ago, and we're in year two. And I wanted to give you an update as to where we are with the curriculum and some exciting savings opportunities as well. So I just I thought I'd start with an interesting um, slide that was just published. So there's always research being done in the space of financial literacy among youth. And this study came out just one month ago 
Um, it hasn't really changed a lot, but I'm, what I want to show here is that financial literacy and personal finance education in our school system is sorely lacking. If you look at the chart right here, um, green states require um, classes to be offered. White states with triangles, you might not be able to see it, but I'll give you the numbers in a minute, um, require, so the, the green, you have to take the class. In the states with black triangles, the class has to be offered. Um, unfortunately, Massachusetts lags both. We don't offer, um, as a state, it's not required to offer financial literacy, and this is at the high school level. And of course, if it's not required to be offered, then it can't be requ required to be taken. So in a nutshell, the green states, there's 22 states, I'm sorry, there's um, 22 states that are, have the little black triangle that say um, you have to offer the class. There's 17 states in the country where it's required to be taken. So we're very, very early on with respect to requiring financial literacy. And it's quite, it's quite amazing and disappointing, but we're working hard at that. So um, the next slide will show you and introduce Fit Money to you. Before Some of you have, on, can I ask of you course. questions about um, Massachusetts? My understanding from conversations with um, Representative DiZaglio is that she was able to um, present and get passed out of the Ed Committee um, legislation to require this. Are you working with that? Like, what can we're meeting with her next week at this in, at, at the state and Fit Money and their board is very much behind that and working with her and actually help draft some of the language. That's terrific. And um, as I understand, we're we're not looking at an unfunded mandate that it's going to go to Ways and Means and be yes. looked at for districts. Correct. Okay. Correct. And I just you know I just was curious what year you know you guys yeah, are in. That's great. And I've gone to Beacon Hill myself personally and and tried to lobby as well. So a bunch of us have done that in the fall. There's always an event. It's a, it's a hard battle to fight, but we're making progress. Thank you. So it's exciting. Okay, so Fit Money, um, we started two years ago um, with a very, very um, engaged board. Um, Jen's on the board. And um, the group came together to really say, we're lacking. We don't have any sort of systemic program in our schools that allow students to be educated along the lines of personal finance. So our goal as an organization is to provide education from lower school to high school and to empower students to want to learn about financial, personal finance, and also to really be empowered to work. Um, and ultimately, our goal is to make sure that students graduate from school with a very, very healthy relationship with money because it's very lacking today. And you'll see here the triangle at the bottom of the page. Our goal ultimately, with students at the top as our really most important audience as an organization, we want to help parents and teachers too. We want to help them have the knowledge to make better investment decisions because we know parents are really important role models and parents in many cases don't have the right tools to make the decisions. So ultimately, we want to build financially fit communities. Um, about us, we're based in Newton. And as I mentioned, we really want to build the knowledge, the skills, and the habits so the students, the next generation, can achieve financial security. There's three things that we think are really, really important to building this model. Number one, and most important, is the curriculum, learn. We want students to learn in the classroom. Um, number two, along the same lines, earn. We, we need for students to have a strong work ethic. I think there's so many stu ch children nowadays that think that um, money grows on trees and that you don't always have to work to earn your keep. But we want, we want students to develop a really strong work ethic. We, we're making that point in every year that we have curriculum. So at least one lesson every year is devoted to working and earning money. Um, along the same lines, saving is certainly important to you. We're a country of incredible debt, and we're trying to see if we can help move the needle on that. So we encourage savings as well, and you'll hear more about a savings opportunity um, with 529 plans in a moment. So what makes Fit Money unique? You've probably seen f financial literacy curriculums out there. You've probably seen a high school class. You've probably seen websites. I think we're different because we're comprehensive. We have the learn, earn, and save model. Some, s some programs have um, you know, one or two lessons, or they have the savings program, but very few tie it all together. Um, number two, the curriculum that we're designing is, so right now we have fourth and fifth grade here in North Andover, which I'll allude to in a minute. Um, but we have built kindergarten through fifth grade. And um, our curriculum developer, who's fantastic, has built it in such a way that the curriculum and each lesson aligns with the Common Core. It actually aligns with Eureka Math with the help of Kara. 
Um, thankfully, um, we have six lessons per year, and we've gotten very good feedback on those lessons, and those lessons um, are ready to teach. They're right out of the box. Um, so we're excited about that, and we're hoping that um, teachers in a number of school districts that we've expanded to will, will be excited about this because the content is good and it's very easy to implement. Um, the other thing that's really important is that we're a multi-year program. So many, as I mentioned before, high school um, is sort of where financial literacy is these days. Um, and it makes sense. I mean, it's, it's a place where they probably can have a standalone program, a standalone class. But our goal is to introduce it early. We've read studies. There's a Cambridge University study that came out about five years ago that says that financial habits are formed by the age of seven. Of course, children aren't going to know, you know, financial concepts, but things like needs versus wants, delayed gratification, impulse control, things of that nature which really translate into financial behaviors, um, that's meaningful to us. So we believe if we start early and help kids develop the financial habits, we're going to be in, children will be in better shape. The savings piece, um, we want to complement the curriculum with that, so it's hands-on um, activities so the kids can bring to life what they learn in the classroom. And finally, as I mentioned before, communities, we want to be able to make sure that we can help parents and teachers expand their knowledge too. So the learning model, as I alluded to, um, we want to teach elementary through high school. So we have K through five, and we're in process right now with our high school curriculum. Um, we realize that some schools won't want a high school curriculum because they have them. Um, the way we're developing it right now is we have 25 modules that we're working on and schools can choose them as they see fit and we'll have probably a few different approaches, a shorter and a longer version. But here in North Am Andover today we have a fourth and fifth grade curriculum that will be offered after MCAS this year and Kara again has been really wonderful to work with to help us bring this to life. Um, so we're excited to see how that goes in the spring. The teachers, um, we know the fourth grade teachers from last year because they, they offered um, a different version of our curriculum, but they offered it last year, so they're familiar with um, what we're thinking. And the plan hopefully for next year is to offer K through five here at North Andover. So the topics, it's always helpful to see what are we, you know, what are we really including in our lesson plans? What are the most important topics? And if you look at these, um, Hopefully you'll agree they're, they're critical. Borrowing and, and saving, taxes and investing, and jobs. These are the things that kids need to understand and really get a good handle on. Finally, saving is, is something that we, we really want for families and for children to think about. So we've aligned ourselves with an organization, and I don't know how many of you save in a 529 plan, but we've aligned ourselves with an organization that until last month was called the Utah Education Savings Program. And I, I say that because it's a very popular one, and you may have heard of it, but they've changed their name to My 529. So My 20, 529 may not mean anything to you, but it's, there's a really substantial organization behind that name. So fourth and fifth grade families have been offered the opportunity for the match. Um, so what we're, we're, we're saying is that if families open an account at My 529 and fund it with $50 by June 30th, we will match $50. Our goal is not to make anything from this. They're a nonprofit, we're a nonprofit. Our goal is to really help families to put a stake in the ground and say, we're starting to save. Um, we've gotten some, some families to open um, their accounts and we have webinars planned over the course of the next week where we're gonna be talking to families about 529s and savings as well um, for college or career training because 529s are for college and for other types of vocational and technical schools as well. Um, fine. Before you, who's? Oh, I thought Jen, I thought Jen was switching. I thought she was rushing me. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. Um, we're also introducing another approach, which we think will be even more exciting. Um, come the end of the month, when when kindergarten families sign up for kindergarten, we're going to be going to that evening as well, because we believe you need to save early, and there's no better time than at kindergarten or birth um, to to make that message very clear. The longer you save, the better off you are. Um, so again, eligible families will receive the match if they open and fund their My, My 529 by June 30th. And on a side note, we've been working with Lowell 5 over the last two years so they can come into the, into the school to collect um, deposits from students who wish to deposit and save in a savings account as well. 
Just want to comment quickly on the kindergarten. It's pretty exciting to think about. You come to North Andover, we're going to help you open a 529 before you put your kid in kindergarten, and we're going to give you 50 bucks to do it, right? So that's actually a pretty exciting message. Um, and then the idea is that the students will have the curriculum starting in K, and we will continue. And you know, one of the things that we've shown a number of times is if you put the money away earlier, <laughs> it's a lot better. So we felt like targeting, we've been working really closely with Judy, is targeting families in when they register for kindergarten and having the laptops, helping them sign up, um, that that would be really helpful. And it sends a message that we say that, yes, K-12 education is important, and we are part of what we're doing is preparing you for life beyond K-12, not just in terms of your academics, but also in terms of helping you think about how to fund it. So we're hoping that this takes off. We'll see how it goes. Um, I think as we rolled out in fourth and fifth, we were afraid that in many cases we were a little too late um, in terms of families that either already opened a 529 or felt like, oh my goodness, you know, college is not that far off. But if we can start with four-year-olds slash five-year-olds, um, it'll be wonderful to, to do. So I'm very excited, and um, Fit Money has made a, a financial commitment to fund as many of the 300-plus kindergarten families that want to do it. And, and so level five comes into the schools on Tuesdays? Yep. They do. Oh, Every and school that Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little well, envelope that you can send in. It's also a great time because you finish paying for diapers and you finish paying for preschool. <laughs> so you've got some cash in your budget. You can start throwing that right into the college fund. Right. We'll put that on our marketing materials. Yeah. <laughs> it's what we did for families. Yeah. It's diaper money. Diaper money. <laughs> okay, well, we just one more slide, I think, and then we're done. Um, so again, learn more. Our website is fitmoney.org, and I just would also just put a little plug in. Spread the word. Financial literacy is important, and the more we can do together, the better our children will be in the future. And if anybody wants to reach out to me at Fit Money, um, by all means, make note of my email, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Are there any other questions before we end, end this discussion? Thank you. That's Thank great. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robin. Sure. Give a quick plug as well for um, both my kids took personal finance at North Andover High School, and they have found it is one of the best classes they've taken. You know, they've talked a lot about dorm life versus you know living in an apartment while they're at school, and you know, and other things like that, credit cards and mortgage mm -hmm. and compound interest, and you know, I'm I'm really excited that we're starting this earlier and you know working towards all our kids getting it. Compound interest in fifth grade. That's where it is in our curriculum for the first time. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you very much. Um, if everybody's all right with it, we're going to um, take uh, item C next, since we have various guests here that are um, interested in hearing us talk about the um, first reading recommendation from the school naming subcommittee. Okay. Ms. Picard. I just want to get to the right pages. So it was a real pleasure to work with, um, with the subcommittee. We had two members that had relationships with the ECC. Um, we met with, uh, I met with Judy and Mary Lou um, to get some recommendations. So we have one, we had one teacher um, that was recommended to serve on the committee who you heard from earlier. Um, we also had a parent who had been on the PTO there. Um, the Historical Society provided us um, with a member, uh, Mark Svensson, uh, sorry, Meg O'Neill is here, um, and uh, from the Board of Selectmen, uh, Phil DeCollegero served on that committee. So it was a really, um, it was a really dynamic committee. We got 23 excellent, very viable um, name options um, to choose between. The committee met twice. Um, the first time we really talked about the history of names in North Andover um, and what, what schools have been named and who they've been named for and um, why they were significant. We talked about um, what was required in the policy and, and what were things that we might want to consider in addition to what was in the policy. Um, the individual members of the committee reviewed all 23 names with the information that the public submitted with the, um, with the suggestion. Every suggestion um, came with some explanation as to why we should consider that name. Um, so they all reviewed that individually. And the second time we met, um, we went through with a, with a yes, no, maybe pile. Um, and with our with our top priorities, and we had a really significant discussion um, around um, around all the names and and why it would be important um, to consider the different names. And we came up with a with a list of four names that are in the packet tonight and have been shared um, with the agenda. Um, they are 
in alphabetical order. We did not rank them. Um, the Ann Bradstreet School, the Kachikowick School, the Freeman School, and the North Andover Early Childhood Center. Um, so in the packet, um, you'll see the information that the public provided. You'll see the information um, from our discussions as a subcommittee. Um, and you'll see the list of all 23 names um, that were recommended. I did um, send an <clears throat> email earlier this week with a link to um, all this information to anybody who suggested a name. Um, heard back from some people. People were very, uh, very thankful, very um, appreciative of, of the work of the subcommittee, and, um, and I am very appreciative. So I'm happy to answer any questions, and um, it will be great for, for our committee to have a conversation about where we want to go from here. Anybody have any questions or comments for Ms. Picard on this first reading? So the first thing that I'll say is, um, I mean, I think that obviously there's a lot of work and time that was put into this. And so um, thank you for doing this. Um, I really like um, the format of this, um, you know, that just calling, you know, what the four uh, names or the four recommendations are um, kind of coming up. Um, Interestingly, I mean, I really like, you know, whether or not we're in favor of it and then whether or not we're in favor of it being our first choice, second choice um, for uh, the four names that kind of came forward. Um, I think it's pretty, pretty nice to kind of know um, as I look at these that, you know, three out of the four, all five you got five five nothing votes right they were all in favor of them they were all kind of acceptable to everybody there was only one that you know one person kind of was uh least enthusiastic about but um kind of just seeing where the com subcommittee helped to rank them kind of i think gives us a little bit of an idea of um the community and some of their feelings with that um i do think that this is um you know the the information for each of the um nominations or uh, proposed names that is there I mean I think that there's really some great stories that are there and I remember um, probably about two and a half years or so ago when we were looking at naming the track going back through um, the sergeant school naming process and reading some of those um, submissions at that time and they were really excellent and, and they were awesome and I know that you went through and, and looked at those as well so um, and I, I know some of these are um, repeats uh, mm -hmm. if you will so um, so thank you for this and I, I really um, appreciate the, the time and the effort that went through with all of this um, it really I, I can't say enough it really it really is such a pleasure to, to hold these stories um, with care and with honor um, not just the stories included here, but you know, all 23 stories were really. Um, it was really a pleasure. Would you get? I mean, the the committees here, most of the committee, and they're nodding. Really, it was we just learned so much about our community. So my my only real question at this point, and um, we, I may rely on uh, some historians in the room, <laughs> um, not necessarily you, Mr. Uh, Limpert, <laughs> but uh, for the Freeman uh, family um, name that's there. There's a, a wing, I think it's the eighth grade wing at the middle school that is uh, named for um, for the Freeman, for, for Cato Freeman or Cato Wynn, um, and his family. Um, why do kids not know? We, we know Sims. But, so but it, it's interesting because, um, and this is my, my personal story, which is when my older son, who's now 21 years old, went through North Andover Middle School, the story was told and it was on the website. Um, between then and now, it's fallen off the website and it fell out of, um, out of people's attention. Um, and thanks to uh, Mr. Svensson um, and the staff at the middle school, um, they were able to unearth that from, you know, some, from some archives somewhere. Um, it's certainly compelling that there are opportunities within the frameworks and the curriculum that these stories could be told, these stories about North Andover. Um, Cato Freeman, um, a freed slave, um, Sims, a legislator um, who voted on the Constitution, um, and Martha Carrier, um, accused of witchcraft and hanged. Um, those are really important stories that our, that our students could learn. Um, and then all the stories of all our schools, and we know the Thompson School story, um, in part because they've been able to Because of Mr. Gilligan. <laughs> because of Mr. Gilligan. And, 
it is. And, and also because of the Veterans Day every year, that mm -hmm. celebration that those students do here, we would love to see that happen um, at the other schools. You know, the Sargent School is named after an educator. And in fact, during the, um, I'm sorry, I'm just really enthusiastic about this. <laughs> this, is, this is important stuff here. But the, um, um, the Sargent School, at the time that the school committee named that, they said, let this stand for all educators, administrators, and supporters of students in our school. Let Annie L. Sargent stand for that. So perhaps <coughs> there's a day during the year um, that, that that Sargent School could lift that story. Um, Kittredge School named for generations and generations of doctors. Perhaps there's a wellness day um, where we could celebrate that as a community. So I, I would love to see us um, really embrace these yeah. names that we have. I mean, I, I have two sons at the middle school and I asked, you know, okay, so we've got Sims, what else do we have? And they're like, nothing. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize other than Sims because sixth grade is Sims and that's where you start and then after right. that. It's just seventh and eighth grade wings. That's yeah. right. That's, that was my yeah. now sophomore's experience. And with our, okay. with our new principal there, you know, that'll be a great way for that person to perhaps make some connections. Okay. Any other discussion at this point? I just want to say, echo Andrew's comments about Helen and, and her committee. Um, I talked to Helen on <coughs> over the weekend at some point. And um, those first, I, I, I knew they were they were meeting, and I knew there were a lot of um, recommendations. But uh, when we spoke, and then she um, sent me the the report, I was uh, very very impressed with the amount of effort and time uh, that went into this. So I want to personally thank you, Helen, My and pleasure. your and your team that 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 did this. Obviously, it's not an easy decision to make. There are people who are very passionate about um, a lot of these recommendations. Um, and I guess we'll just have to make a make a decision. I don't know what the process for that is going to be, Madam Chair. Um, but uh, you know, there's, there's there's a couple that I think are you know rise to the top for me personally. Um, but uh, I look forward to hearing the, the discussion about them. Well, we could certainly have some discussion now. I don't know if people want to go back and reflect some more first. Um, the way it was done for Sergeant was there was a nomination made. And then there were another nomination was made. There was a lot of discussion. Other things were brought up, and then there was a vote. Um, but we'll do that. We'll do that at our next gonna, meeting. Yeah, we'll do that, vote that this our time. Next we're not going to nominate anything. But I didn't know if there was any other discussion or questions um, around any of these names or um, comment at this point. I would just like to say, I know we just touched on it. That whoever's chosen, um, you know, that 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 name. Um, you know, there's a lot of historical significance to a lot of these, the names of our schools. And to Helen's point, I don't think, you know, our students know enough about these, these historical figures. And I would, I would ask the, the incumbent superintendent maybe to, to make sure we, we, we start doing that in, with our, our curriculum starting next year in, in all the schools. Um, and I know I, I will give uh, great credit. I mean, I grew up in this town. I didn't really know who Thompson was named after or Kitch was named after. When I became a state rep and Greg was inviting me to come to the school when he being principal, that's how I learned about Private Albert Thompson. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't I didn't know about that at all. In fact, I know a lot of people used to say it's the Thompson School with a P. You know, but uh, I appreciate you. I know you took it to heart, and I think all our school principals to take take the, these names to heart. So, I'd to see that be done. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any other comments at this point? I concur with. Andrew and David, that the work you put into this was just tremendous. And I also really liked the way you showed how the committee voted on each name. I thought that was really helpful. And um, the background you provided, I mean, this is a tremendous document. So thank you. Agreed. So All right. I, I do have a little bit of a clarifying question. Um, obviously, these, uh, this building will be, or, or we are building the kindergarten building, which will be connected to the current Early Childhood Center. So are we naming the kindergarten building only? Are we naming the unit? Are we, I mean. So, so uh, my understanding when we came forward was that this is a unified building that will be the ECC, which includes kindergarten. So ECC goes up to age eight. So anybody age we eight. teach okay. preschool through kindergarten will be considered um, that early through childhood six. Age, age through six, yes. through eight. Early eight. childhood is through eight. My educators back there. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so I think and I don't want to speak for Mary, Mary Lou and Judy, but I'm 
disagree with me. You know, we feel pretty strongly as the educators that this is one school, yeah. and it's very important that we present it as one school. It's not one side and the other. You know, we are very much looking to create a space for our earliest learners and it for to feel like one school. So that was something that is important to us. Is that right? And that's why we're using the term complex, complex. for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was part of the subcommittee discussion, and that's why you'll see that um, um, in the public suggestions, they sometimes had names like uh, the such and such kindergarten. Um, you'll see that the subcommittee recommended the word school, the Ann Bradstreet School, the Kajikwik School, um, and then you know perhaps the Early Childhood Center, um, staying with that. That said, this committee is really free to do a lot of things. Like if we wanted to call it the Ann Bradstreet Early Childhood Center, we could call that the ABECC. Um, if we wanted to <laughs> mess with these in different ways. I, I championed for mess, a little while the, the ABCC, but nobody went, nobody went with that. <laughs> They were completely dismissive. But you know, <laughs> that's, right. Yes. that's right, that's <laughs> right. It's all out of order. So right. we, have, that's we right. have a lot of latitude, um, but this is what you know, five people came up with that we thought was worthy of your consideration. Right. I just wanted to be sure we're talking about naming the entire, the entire building, not structure. left side, right side. Correct. No. Okay. All right. Unless that's what you want to do, Mr. McDevitt. <laughs> I didn't say I wanted to do that. I'm just asking for <laughs> clarification. Yeah, the right. intention is to, is to name the entire yes. school community of early okay. learners. All right. So the goal is to vote on this, uh, I'm sorry, I've lost on my, the on the 15th, mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Any other discussion at this point? I thank the committee very much for this work. Thank you, Helen. I, everybody's already said it, but having an idea of where you all stood, doesn't matter who stood where, but where you all stood as a group is very helpful. So thank you. Um, it's an important decision. Um, as is whether or not some students go to um, Montpellier. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as usual, um, we're looking for our French exchange trip. Uh, this is not much different than we've done in previous years. This is for 2019. We're scheduling far ahead here, so we're about a year out. Um, always important to do them ahead of time. Um, you know, as you know, we've had some struggles with this one being consistent. We've then had issues coming and going, but I always think that Chris Carroll, who is the one who's doing this, it's important for her to get it out there so that she then can promote the trip to see if it would actually go. So some years it's gone, some years it hasn't, um, but this is a very standard yearly request. Does anybody have a question? I, I have a question, but I don't know if anybody else has any first. Um, I've had some parents ask me, I know that we've had exchange students coming here for years from France. Yep. We are no, are we still exchanging, uh, truly exchanging, going to their community or is that over with? If is it we, a one way exchange? So the idea is that we actually have the exchange. The challenge has been given the tumultuous uh, world situation that we've had a hard time getting families to have their kids to go so we haven't been consistent but one of the things that we feel really important is keeping the link so that's why we've been having families come. right so but I will double check with with Chris about the history right I'm just wondering you know yep. Montpellier is in southern France I don't remember where we get the students from um, and is it that much yep. different that why aren't we just exchanging with that community again or is there something about that community I'll find out because um, it seems like the reciprocation part is an important piece to yep. the visit. I will check. I'll let you know on the 15th. Thank you. Any other comments or questions at this point? Okay. Great. Um, and that brings us to public comment. Hello. It's working. You can tilt it down too if you'd like. <laughs> it goes um, to the TV too. <laughs> my name is Kim Angelo. I live at 11 Bay Point Lane in Haverhill, but I'm a teacher at the Early Childhood Center. And um, the teachers, we're, we're very appreciative of the committee that had to sift through all those very um, sentimental and heartfelt um, suggestions for names for our school. Um, we t today put this letter together and we all signed it. 
and is I know we, we gave, have here. Okay. Yes, oh, I, I haven't opened it yet. I know. I don't. Okay. And <laughs> I just, I'm sitting there <laughs> thinking. The Oscar. <laughs> 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 like, um, and I just felt like I might miss an opportunity if I didn't stand Please. today yes. to have this heard before it goes to a vote. So um, our letter said, at a recent meeting, we were updated on the status of the ECC Building Naming Committee, informing us of the four names that are being put forth as the options for the new kindergarten preschool facility. While we understand that this process is not easy and that there are many passionate and valid opinions on whom this new school should be named after, there is but one person whose name is not being included in this final vote. For over 24 years, she is and always has been the lifeblood of the North Andover Early Childhood Education, Miss Mary Lou Connors. Unfortunately, as we understand it, there is a policy against naming a municipal building after a living person. If that is in fact accurate, we feel that dedicating this new facility to a person other than Mary Lou Connors for the sake of having a name on the building would be a disservice to the compassion and lifelong commitment she has given to the town of North Andover and the Early Childhood Program from its inception. We respectfully request that the committee reconsider placing a surname on this new facility and choose to continue to call it the North Andover Early Childhood Center or Complex. And we all signed it. <laughs> so if you could consider that, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Your face is pretty good. <laughs> um, Mark Svensson, 201 Humana Road, North Andover. I just, as a member of the subcommittee, I'm not going to advocate for uh, an individual, but I just, you brought up some points, and I will address, I guess, two things. The, the question about the middle school. Um, I don't, I went to the middle school, and when I was there, you were assigned to a, uh, a house, and you were there for three years. Um, so there was a three-year period where you really got to build some identity. You were either in the Freeman House for three years, the Sims House, the Carrier House. And there was a lot done around that. Uh, I was in Freeman when I started in sixth grade. There was Freeman First Fridays. There was Freeman Bucks. And the history was included. There was stuff on the website um, for different assignments. We remember we took computer class and we had to write up the paragraph uh, info about each person. Um, that went away, I think, when the, the you broke up into grade levels and kind of became the sixth grade hallway, the seventh grade hallway, and the eighth grade hallway. So just some more history for that. Um, my other thing, and I'm just going to echo what Helen said, and I didn't know she was going to present it, but uh, as the Historical Society representative on this board, there is a great history to all of our schools. And for me personally, I had no idea who Atkinson was, uh, didn't really know who Kittredge was, and I went to the Kittredge School. Um, so finding out, you know, these were names that people at one point in time thought we were very important to put on a name uh, on a building, yet 50, 60, 80 years later, we've kind of forgotten the contributions of those people. So to everyone's point, I think Mr. Teresi brought it up as well, um, you know, we have a, we have a great uh, job here at Thompson of, of honoring Albert Thompson. How can we find ways to, to do that for the other schools and really, I guess, incorporate that into the curriculum? Uh, Helen mentioned uh, Sergeant, maybe national, you know, there's Teachers Appreciation Day. She was a teacher. That might be a good day to do something to that. Um, so anyway, just to tackle that, I think moving forward, whatever name you choose, whatever it is, uh, for all of our schools, how can we incorporate uh, that history so that kids know who they are, have a sense of community, and can remember, uh, you know, names that we're very, obviously very passionate about. So that's all. Thanks. Before you sit, Mr. Svensson, yep. um, you're a math teacher. You were here for our Eureka Math presentation. Yes. Do you have any impressions or thoughts about that? <laughs> High school math, I know it's a, a distance, but. Um, yeah, that was, uh, I, I'll be honest, I'm skeptical about a lot of different math programs that are put out um, by different organizations. Just. You never know what, uh, what you know, you've seen horror stories on Facebook about this problem takes 300 steps, but it's like adding two numbers together. Um, but I, especially the second lesson that was done with just adding and subtracting, and I think it was actually Steve Wrigley's kid who, I actually had Mr. Wrigley for math, um, <laughs> who did it by adding two to both numbers and then subtracting. Uh, that, that is a very important thing, concept. It's very tough to teach at a, at a later year. So I, um, I was very impressed with that. Um, so. I, I actually was looking up Eureka Math on my iPad, and it, it looks uh, very promising. And I know, um, you know, Miss Stam was one of my teachers as well. She's oh, she's still here, Miss um, Larkham actually. Uh, <laughs> so, Stam when I had her. So I know uh, she's going to do a great job. But I was I was extremely impressed. I was extremely impressed. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, 
when I see them later, if I see them later, that'll uh, it'll pay dividends off. So anyway, <laughs> that's it. Was good. Thank it was you. very good. Did you have that, Mr. Ridley, or is that? I had both. I had, I had wow. His, I had his dad. <laughs> his third grade at Sargent was a student teacher. So. No. <laughs> wow. It's public comment. Oh, You're gonna, always our public, Mr. Lindbergh. Are we going to put that to a vote? Yeah. <laughs> I, I at, to, at my discretion. I, uh, when I come here, there's like the Teresi rule. When I go to the Board of Selectmen, there's the Santilli rule, right? Yes. It, it, it works the same. I get All the a little bit of time. That's right. <laughs> um, two things I wanted to say about tonight. First was, um, I, have to, I have to admit, a number of years ago, I was somewhat skeptical about Rays and the BRC. I, was a good program, it seemed good, but I, I just, I, I didn't quite get it. And I was completely wrong about that. I think that's all fit together with everything we're doing now. And I think, uh, to Dr. Price's point, I think it makes, it makes us look way smarter than we probably really are. I mean, it looks like we were so far ahead of this that it, it was really a much smarter thing than I realized at the time. And I think the point of the program was consistency, just sticking with it for years made it, I think, as useful as anything else. The second thing is that I wanted to compliment both the school committee and the administration for holding these meetings here in schools. I think this is the most wonderful thing. Why didn't we think of this years ago? We should have been doing this years ago. This is just great to, particularly uh, for you all, to get out and see what it is you're voting on. I mean, this is it. This is the bottom line. This is where the rubber meet, meets the road. So I think this is a wonderful thing, and I really hope you keep it up uh, as we go through regime change here. I thought. Keep, I'm sure we'll keep doing this at least at the Albert E. Thompson <laughs> School, at least here, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And Ms. McCoon started teaching when she was 12, right? Right. Any other comments? Public comment? Thank you. Um, do any of my colleagues have anything to share before we wrap things up? I just want to say I'm very excited on Saturday night. I'll be attending my first father-daughter <laughs> dance with my kindergartner. Really, really, really excited about that. Very nice. Send pictures. I'll tweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have anything to share? I, I can share that um, my sophomore, who I've already embarrassed once tonight, um, went on the trip that we approved to the Dominican Republic, the service trip, mm -hmm. and um, she left the Wednesday before vacation and came back. Um, I think there were 12 girls and three boys and two um, chaperones from the high school. And then they had a, a chaperone with EF um, who had a big impact in, on them, I think Hugo, um, and somebody locally. And I can tell my colleagues that um, that was an, a great trip that we approved and should continue to do that. Um, just what she and one of her friends shared about just the Mariposa Foundation, what they experienced there, what that institution is doing, organization is doing, trying to do to, as my daughter said, stop the cycle of poverty by focusing on girls and getting girls out of the oppression that they are in, um, was very impactful to these young people um, to the point where my daughter said, you know, they have summer internship programs, summer things that you can do when you're in college to go and work there and volunteer, and I'm really interested in that, and she's a sophomore. so. Um, it was a really amazing experience, um, and we've seen that at the Live Your Learning Dinner as students come back, but I, I can tell you just from my own kid, it was, it was a, a huge deal. Um, and uh, I really want to thank the two chaperones, um, Ms. Harnois and um, Mrs. Duckworth. Uh, they were, it was their first time, both of them as well, and they were seriously um, impacted personally as well. So um, I can tell you all that that was very valuable. And I want to mention, too, that I don't know if you were going to say this, Dr. Price, but this room that we're in tonight um, is one of the temporary classrooms that was shifted around um, when we added a third grade here for this year, um, a second grade, excuse me. Uh, this was a, a, a computer lab and I think also a resource room in that corner for um, various special education reading support. And um, Ms. Padovani, who is here tonight, this is her room, and she's done an amazing job here. So. And it's she exciting. was able to be hired because we increased the number of elementary teachers um, and reduced class size. Um, so it's right. exciting. I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. Raymond and his entire staff for hosting us tonight, especially uh, Kenny, who uh, worked very He's hard um, to have this look like a school committee meeting. Um, so you know, I, I appreciate Stan's comments. I do hope that you all continue getting into the schools. Um, 
I, you know, I think it's a, it's a wonderful way for us to see what we're voting on. I, I absolutely agree, and, I, and we're doing it again uh, in two weeks. We're going to go with Sargent, and I appreciate everyone's indulgences to kind of move our meetings. Um, we're very excited to talk about the Lucy Hawkins Reading Program, which is something we're then going to ask for some, <laughs> some voting on. So uh, this was the looking past, and the next one is going to be looking forward. Right. Thank you. If there are no other comments, I would entertain a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. I moved. I'll second that. A motion by Mr. Trissy, second by Mr. McDevitt. Ms. Picard? Yeah, aye. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Aye. And I. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate y'all being here. Have a great evening. These kids were so cute. Oh my gosh, can you stand? Were they cute? They